so we've made it to chapter 5, which is the last chapter we're covering, and in fact, section 5.1 is the last section we're covering, so this is really the end, and we're going to wrap it up with logical reasoning. Um, so these first few questions have to do with, with statements and, and what does it mean for a statement to be true, so, so let's jump right into this. If you haven't already tried the warm-up problems, you should go ahead, download problem set 5.1, and give these warm-up problems a try before watching the video. All right, so the first question, uh, in the first question you encounter three people, Alice, Bob, and Carol, and they say to you all at once, Alice tells you Bob is lying, Bob tells you that Carol is lying, and Carol tells you that both Alice and Bob are lying, right? So they're talking about the statements that each other are making. And so you're trying to figure out, is there, is there any way for you to know who's telling the truth and who's lying here? Or is, or is there multiple possibilities? And so let's try to work our way through this problem. Now, there may be some, some other ways to do this, but I would just sort of jump in and do some guess and check here. So for instance, if it were the case that Alice was telling the truth, if Alice is telling the truth, well, that would mean that her statement is true. So that would mean that Bob must be lying. Okay, well, what's Bob saying? Bob is telling us that Carol is lying, but Bob himself is a liar. So his statement that Carol is lying is false, it's a lie, which means we can conclude that Carol in this scenario is telling the truth. Okay, so Carol's statement would have to be true in this case. That means that Alice and Bob are both lying. Right? If she's telling the truth, then her statement is true, which means Alice and Bob are lying. Okay, does that make sense? Well, no, it doesn't. Because we started off by assuming that Alice was telling the truth. We followed these different uh, line of reasoning logically, and we reached the conclusion that Alice and Bob are lying, and so in particular, Alice is lying. Right? It can't be the case that if Alice is telling the truth, then she's also lying. That doesn't make any sense. So we started off by assuming Alice was telling the truth, and we reached a contradiction, which means there's no way Alice could have been telling the truth in the first place. That means Alice must be lying. Okay, well let's start there then. We know for a fact that Alice is lying. Right, let's say she's a liar. Which means her statement is false. If she's lying, then she's telling a lie when she calls Bob a liar. Right, so if Alice is telling a lie, then Bob's not really lying at all, which means Bob must be telling the truth. Okay, well, then that means this is a true statement. Carol is actually lying, which means Carol must be lying. And that's consistent because if Carol's lying, then that means it's not the case that Alice and Bob are both lying. Right? For this statement to be a lie means it is not the case that both Alice and Bob are lying. Right, which makes sense, that's consistent. It isn't the case that they're both lying. Only one of them's lying, the other one's telling the truth. Okay, so this is all consistent here. And because we knew that Alice had to be lying because we had started off by assuming that she was telling the truth and reached a contradiction, then we know that Alice is lying. And using that, we know for sure that Bob is telling the truth. And using that, we know for sure that Carol is lying. So there's really only one consistent scenario here and it's this scenario. This scenario that I've laid out, Alice is lying, Bob's telling the truth, Carol is lying. Okay, so we were able to use um, logical reasoning and deductive steps in order to figure out that this is the only possible scenario. Um, now, how do we know really what it means for something to be true or false? Well, in some cases, for some certain types of statements, it's just stuff that we know. It's just sort of facts or, or not. Um, and so we can kind of go through this next problem here 
It's asking us to read each one of these sentences, these English sentences, and determine whether these sentences are true or false, or whether they're neither true nor false, or whether maybe they have a truth value, but we just don't know what it is. So let's go through real quick. The first statement says BSU, assuming that means Bridgewater State, is in Connecticut. This, of course, is false because it's in Massachusetts. It's in Massachusetts State College University. Uh, the statement go to bed, it's not really something that has a truth value. It's a command. So I would say this is a neither. Right? A sentence like this doesn't have a truth value. Uh, where is my hairbrush? Well, that's a question. That's not even a statement. It's just a question. So this can't have a truth value either. Today is Tuesday. Um, hmm. I believe that you are going to be watching this on Thursday, so I'm going to say this is false. Well, I guess if we're going to be really clear when we say today, we need to specify what day we're talking about. So I'm going to tell you what day it currently is, which is Saturday, April 28th. Nope. 18th. Okay. So once we've specified what we mean by today, Saturday, April 18th, this is a false statement. Because, obviously, if it's Saturday, it is not Tuesday. Alright, statement E says the only single-digit prime numbers are 2, 5, and 7. Also false. Because 3 is also a single-digit prime number. Um, F, this is sort of a curveball here. N is a natural number. Is this true? Is this false? I don't know. What is N? If N is 5, or 7, or 1, or any natural number, it would be true. If n is 0, or negative 2, or pi, it would be false. Its truth value depends on n, and we don't know enough about n to know whether this is true or false. Or in particular, this could be true, or it could be false. We don't know. So this is, this is unknown, or sorry, this is, this is neither true nor false, because its truth value could change depending on what n is. Okay. Um, Part G says it is June and five is an odd number. Well, I already said it's it's April 18th today, so it's not June, right? This part of this statement here is false. And five is an odd number, so this part of the statement here is true. But in order for an and statement to be true, we really want both sides of it to be true. And since it's not both true, since the first part is false, we would say this entire and statement is a false statement. Even though five is an odd number, it's not June. So this and statement can't be true. In part H, it's almost the same statement, but now it's saying it's June or five is an odd number. Well, it's not June, but that doesn't really matter here because for an or statement to be true, we only need one part of it to be true. So since five is an odd number, that makes this entire or statement true. And finally, Every even number can be expressed as a sum of two primes. Okay, technically this is false. Because, for instance, two is an even number. And two cannot be expressed as a sum of two primes. Because you can either write it as two plus zero or one plus one. But zero is not prime and one is not prime. So, okay, so this is technically false. What I meant here, what I probably should have said, is every even natural number greater than two can be expressed as a sum of two primes. And this we might try to investigate it a little bit. Well, four is two plus two, so that's a sum of two prime numbers, because two is prime. Six we could think about as three plus three, those two primes. Eight is four plus four doesn't work, but five plus three works. 10 is five plus five, 12, seven plus five, we could start trying to guess and check here, and, and so far it seems like all of these even numbers greater than 2 can be expressed as a sum of 2 primes. But as it turns out, this is actually one of the most well-known unsolved problems in math. Um, we call this an open problem because we don't know the answer. Most mathematicians will tell you that the answer is probably yes, but no one's been able to prove it yet. Nevertheless, even though we don't know the truth value of this, it has to either be true or false. Either you can find a counterexample, you can find some even number bigger than two, which cannot be expressed as a sum of two primes. 
or you can't, in which case this whole statement would be true. So it, even though we don't know the truth value, it still has a truth value. So this is one of those unknown truth values, right? The truth value exists one way or the other, we just don't know what it is yet. No one's been able to prove it. It's kind of a fun problem. All right, let's look at the last problem on the warm-up. So I told Dennis, if you get a 90 on the final, then you will get an A for the semester. Assuming that I'm telling him the truth then, what does that mean? If Dennis did not get an A for the semester? What can you conclude if Dennis didn't get an A for the semester? Well, assuming that what I told him was the truth, then you would be able to conclude that if Dennis did not get an A for the semester, he must not have gotten a 90 on the final. Why? Well, I told him that if he had gotten a 90 on the final, then he would get an A for the semester. So since he didn't get an A for the semester, there's no way that this if part could have been satisfied. Right? We would reach a logical contradiction the same way we did in number one by assuming he didn't get an A for the semester and then reaching the conclusion that he or if, if we assume that he did not get a 90 on the final as well, or if, oh boy, I've messed this up. All right, assume Dennis did not get an A for the semester and assume by way of contradiction that he actually did get a 90 on the final. Well, based on this true if then statement, that means he would have gotten an A for the semester. So he did not get an A for the semester, but he did get an A for the semester. That, there's no way that those two things could be true at the same time, that's a contradiction which means if he didn't get an A for the semester, then he must not have gotten a 90 on the final. All right, so in, this, in these warm-up problems, we've looked at a variety of different types of statements and used sort of our own, just sort of background knowledge about logic and logical reasoning to try and determine whether they're true or false. But what we really wanna do in this section is to get a really more thorough understanding of, of what it means to be a mathematical statement and how do we know when mathematical statements are true and false. Okay, so we want to determine whether a mathematical statement is true or not. So what really qualifies as a statement? Well, a statement is just, or the way that we're going to define it, is it's anything that we can express using words or symbols that has a truth value. It doesn't have to be necessarily a true statement to be a statement. It doesn't necessarily have to be false either. It just has to have a truth value. So if we go back to the warm-up problems, this first statement had a truth value. So we can say this is a statement. I'm just going to highlight. Oh, this is hard to see that. I'm going to circle the ones that are statements. So this first one, this is a statement because it has a truth value. This is not considered a mathematical statement because go to bed doesn't have a truth value. Where is my hairbrush doesn't have a truth value. Today, Saturday, April 18th is Tuesday, had a truth value. The only single digit prime numbers are two, five, and seven. It had a truth value, so it's a statement. N is a natural number, didn't have a truth value because its truth value would depend on N, so it might, it could be true and it could also be false. So since it doesn't have a single truth value, it's not a statement. It's June and five is an odd number was a false statement. It's June or five is an odd number is a true statement. And finally, this last one here, every even natural number greater than two can be expressed as the sum of two primes. This, we don't know the truth value, but it has to have a truth value, which means this is a statement, even though we don't know for sure whether it's true or it's false. Okay. And so what we want to do is we want to build up some, some structure behind what we think of as statements and what does it mean for statements of a particular time to be or a particular kind to be true or false. And just as a remark, um, when we're talking about general statements, mathematical statements, um, we use variables that are capital letters, usually starting with P and Q, um, to represent arbitrary statements, right? So P might represent the statement BSU is in Connecticut, or it might represent the statement um, it is June, or five is an, an odd number, right? So when we see things like capital P, capital Q, capital R, 
it's a variable that represents some arbitrary mathematical statement. So it's something that has a truth value, true or false. Okay, so the statements that we were seeing on the last page, um, some of them were pretty simple. It was easy to tell if they were true or false. And some of them were a little bit more complicated. Um, in particular, some of them required logical connectives to sort of express what they were saying. So for instance, we talked about the statement, it is June and five is an odd number. That has the logical connective of an and in the middle. So this is essentially the statement P and Q, right? Which is a statement that's only gonna be true as long as the first part P and the second part Q are both true. As opposed to the statement, it is June or five is an odd number, which we would represent symbolically with this P or Q. Sort of looks like a V symbol in the middle, P or Q. This is a statement which is true as long as either P is Q or true, uh, P is true or Q is true or both. Okay, um, other statements, we have negations. So this is read as not P or the negation of P, right? We negated the statement, both Alice and Bob are lying. When we negated it, we said, it's not the case that both Alice and Bob are lying. So at least one of them is telling the truth. Okay, so that's a negation. This is a statement, if P, then Q. P implies Q, is another way of reading this. All right, we saw that in, in question three. If I get a 90 on the final, then I will get an A in the class. Or if Dennis gets a 90 on the final, then Dennis will get an A for the semester. Okay, so this is a conditional statement or an implication. And finally, the last one, we didn't see one of these exactly on the, on the warm-up, but this symbol here is an if and only if symbol. P is true if and only if Q is true. Okay, so in the next video, we'll walk through each one of these symbols, these logical connectives, and discuss what it means for each, uh, for a statement of this type to be true or false.